Hello, dear friends. This is Dimitri Badyarov of Badyarov Violence. And I think in today's Facebook Live, I need to apologize because yesterday I wanted to do a little video to show you how to play the violoncello da spalla in an easy way. And unfortunately, my camera ran out of space. So, which is why I decided to just simply do a Facebook Live. Hello, Barry. Nice to see you here. So, um, before I begin and show you the uh, instrument, I actually want to explain you, tell you a few words about what Violoncello da Spala is. Uh, potentially you already know what it is, and maybe you have been following my page for a long while, but maybe it is the first time, or maybe it's still not totally clear in your mind. So this is what I want to explain very briefly, and then I will show you how to actually play it in a very easy way. Well, um, hello Mitsugun, good to see you. Hello Barry once again. Um, anyone watching this video, please comment uh, below or, or, or leave a like or something so that I know you are here. Uh, well, Violoncello da Spalla is the predecessor of the modern day violoncello, modern cello, and this has been the instrument of choice for a number of very important Baroque musicians. It has been in use well into the 18th century. It was known to musicians such as even Leopold Mozart. And it survived in um, the folkloric circles in the 19th century in France. But in the 17th century and 18th century, musicians such as uh, Caldara, it was also known in Bononcini circle, and Johann Sebastian Bach used that instrument for their compositions. And Violoncello da Spalla can be made in a variety of sizes, from the very smallest one that I'm normally creating to a very much larger one. So it really depends on the repertoire. So if you are a violinist or violist and you have a decent, good technique and you want to explore even more repertoire with Violoncello da Spalla, such as play violin repertoire, play cello repertoire, play viola repertoire, make even arrangements of vocal repertoire and play it on Violoncello da Spalla, you can expand your repertoire enormously, then this video is uh, for you, and if you are a violinist or violist, potentially also interested in the music of Johann Sebastian Bach, you might want to choose the instrument of the size I want to show you. And this was this was the instrument created by Johann Sebastian Bach's contemporary Johann Christian Hoffmann in Leipzig. So, well, this is a great instrument. It's uh, really great for you if you are the type of violinist or violist who loves deep basses. You feel happy to play on an instrument that resonates like really from the heart. It literally, literally feels like this because the instrument is so big that it's attached to your chest. And when it vibrates, it's almost like you feel the whole body becomes a musical instrument. It's absolutely incredible uh, feeling. And um, well, when you start playing this, it's not just the joy of making a lot more music. Um, it's more visibility. Also, if you are the type of violinist interested in visibility and getting more work as a violinist, because it's not that people will stop inviting you uh, as a violinist, they will start inviting you both as a violinist and violoncellist da Spala. And actually playing this instrument is exactly what has taken me or in mass media such as uh, Tokyo MXTV, the Nikkei News, a major business Japanese newspaper, Radio France, Destrad, and has been my, my workshop has been mentioned in a number of uh, a huge number of publications, also thanks to all of the clients and customers who are playing my instrument. So this is a huge bonus also for you if you are an instrument maker. Uh, hello Boril, um, hello Tony, yeah. Uh, so, um, hello Migo, Esteban, uh, good to see you here. So, but uh, some musicians, and maybe even you, have this uh, equation in your mind, but how do you play the Anshel Daspal? It seems to be so huge, it seems to be so uncomfortable. And the truth is, it is completely the exact opposite to what lots of people think. Uh, normally, by the way, people who have even never seen the instrument, they make assumptions that this instrument must be very difficult to play because it is bigger than the viola. Which seems to be logical, but not quite. So let me just grab the instrument. Okay, hold on, watch this video, don't uh, scroll away. I will grab the instrument and I will simply show you how it works. So here we are. Here is the Gongshou Das Palo that I've made in 2005. Yeah, so it's a pretty large instrument, as you can see. Gorgeous instrument, by the way. And it is attached with a strap. So the instrument is very much bigger, as you can see, than an ordinary viola, but 
mysteriously, it is easier to play than the viola. Even my wife, who is not a very large person, uh, played this instrument three days after practicing three days. She was already on the concert stage and even recording a CD, which I think is about to get uh, published. So this is how you attach it. Here's the belt, all right? I hope you can see this. So the belt goes under the tail piece. Yeah, so the, there is a space under the tail piece. And what you need to do is simply, so imagine you have this thing in your hands. You simply tuck the, the belt under the tail piece. Wait a second, I'm going to show you the belt. So the belt is a leather belt. Yeah, look, this is nothing very exotic. It is simply a beautiful leather belt. And I've uh, added some stamping on it so that it looks uh, even nicer, right? So um, the upper end of the belt has this thickening. That's what it looks like. And you need this little wedge here so that the belt does not slip from under the fingerboard. So now I'm going to insert the belt under the fingerboard. And there it is. So that's it. That's how it is attached. And what you do next is simply pass the belt around your uh, shoulder and then tuck it under the tailpiece like this. You might be wondering why don't I fix the belt length? So why is this uh, little leather uh, strap on it? This is because the leather belt doesn't have a fixed length. So if it is very moist and hot, the belt will become a little bit longer and this is why I need to adjust it, make it shorter, because if it's too long, I cannot play, it's very inconvenient. And the opposite is true, when it's uh, dry, the belt will shrink, so you need to adjust the length every now and then. So what I do next is I simply tuck this end under the tailpiece, like this, and then ready uh, to play. So when you get this instrument in your hands, you don't walk on stage like some spiders try to do with the instrument kind of you try to squeeze yourself in like this which looks kind of funny and is not elegant it is not convenient and it's not a very artistic way of doing this instead you walk on stage to the applause of your audience yeah you walk on stage with the instrument just like this there is an audience in front of you yeah full hall yeah you bow and then you tuck the instrument like this and you are ready to play, okay? So the key here is this. See, the instrument is very large and it is bigger than an ordinary viola, right? Would you agree it is bigger than the viola? I hope you can see it in the video. So it is a huge instrument, but it is not as heavy as holding the viola. Why is that, you might be wondering. Well, this is because you don't need to hold it at all. It is hanging on the belt. So when you are playing the viola, and if you are a violinist and you try to play the viola, and you feel a shoulder ache, ah, <laughs> they're playing the viola because viola is a heavy thing. Jesus Christ. You might be thinking that violoncello da spalla must be a killer thing. Uh, you probably even thought that if you play violoncello da spalla, you go straight to the hospital after playing. But it's not really the case because they... There is no weight of the violoncello da spalla to support at all. So this is the violoncello da spalla, it is hanging on the belt, I don't have to support it with my hand. Now watch this, this is very important if you are um, violoncello da spalla or if you are considering playing the violoncello da spalla so that you explore all this repertoire and you get all this exposure in mass media and you grow your career way easier because there is no competition, potentially there are no that many spalla players in your country yet. So this is a great moment to start right doing this right now. So watch this. Uh, the instrument is hanging on, on the belt. There is absolutely no effort of any kind um, for you to do that. So way is easier than violin. It is way easier than the viola. So the next thing you need to do, you need to play to get the right posture. And there are many ways of getting the posture completely wrong. So I'm going to show you the right way of getting the posture correct so that it is easy for you to play, right? Without effort. Look this. Yeah, so my hands are hanging uh, along my body in the most natural, most relaxed way. Watch this. See, here are my hands, and they are literally hanging completely relaxed. 
Yeah. So when you play Spala, all you need to do is raise your hands like this. You can, you can even try to do it with myself. Imagine you have Spala attached against your uh, chest. You don't feel any weight because it is relatively it is relatively light, especially when it is supported with the strap. Simply raise your hands, yeah, like this, like I've just done, just like this, yeah. Uh, not too high, not too low, just uh, around there. What you need to do next is simply turn your right arm this way, because this is your bowing arm, yeah. You turn your right arm this way, you leave your left arm the way it is, and that is your playing posture. This is how you hold it on the spalla. So your hands are in the most natural, most relaxed position ever. It is not possible on the violin, it is not possible on the violin, because on the violin you have to raise the instrument higher. Well, let me show this, so that you understand what I mean, especially if you are an instrument maker and you do not play necessarily the violin or the violin, maybe it's difficult for you to imagine what I'm talking about. So, look, with Galanchelda's palette, simply raise your hands, that is it. Turn your right hand this way and you are ready to play. Watch the position of my right arm, by the way, it's not this way. I'm not stretching my pinky, that will be killing your arm. You will get tendinitis in three days. No, it's completely relaxed and I'm stretching my first finger and second finger rather than pinky. I'm saving my pinky. That is your playing posture on the Villanchel Despal. What can be easier? What can be more natural than this? If you're wondering how even my wife, who is not a giant person, was able to master this instrument in three days, be on stage, get paid as a soloist, and record even a CD. Well, I'm not sure about the pay, by the way. Uh, but uh, it is this instrument that uh, completely transformed my career, made my career also ways more sustainable and fun and profitable. Anyway, <clears throat> with violin, this is what happens normally. So you raise your arm very much higher. You need to move your hand farther away from your body because violin, well, it's not a big instrument, but just just because of the playing posture, you need to stretch your... Let me move away from the camera. You need to stretch your uh, arm farther, does it make sense? On the viola is even farther. And then when you are shifting into the higher positions, uh, you need all these kind of movements. Well, maybe this is uh, also, you might have to do it on the spalle as well, but on the violin or viola, what you also do, you need to, um, especially when you're playing on the lower strings, you need to, you need to move out, like, bring out your elbow. So this creates the most uncomfortable, unnatural posture you can ever imagine. This is why playing violin or viola is so unhealthy. This is why there are so many orchestra musicians are suffering from health issues because violin or viola is not the healthiest, healthiest instrument you can play. On the violin style, that does not happen because your posture is easy. Yeah, so you simply raise your arms. Now I'm going to show you why maybe you tried to do this and it didn't work because there is one little secret. By the way, if you have any questions, simply comment uh, below. Um, perfect, thanks, a huge help. Uh, Bodil, uh, Ellen, uh, great. Well, share below if you share below if you are already a spa player. Hello, Joseph, Adriana, Roberto, uh, Kalin, uh, Kenske, Johnny. Hello, everyone. Uh, so let me show you. One very big mistake uh, lots of beginners are making with Galanchel de Spala and for a long while, sometimes months, they don't realize they're making a mistake and then they figure out, ah, it is not possible to play Galanchel de Spala, I better quit. Okay, so you don't need to quit. Let me show you once again how you attach this instrument. So you walk on stage, yeah, to the applause of your audience, Oof. A big crowd waiting for a performance to begin, but maybe not this week, but after the lockdown is over for sure. Uh, so why not adding this competitive edge to your career right now? So pass the belt around your shoulder, attack it under the tailpiece like this. Done, you are ready to play. Not this. There are a couple of tricks here. The belt is not sitting on my neck. The belt is going around my shoulder, which makes it even healthier and easier. By the way, this is a trick that I haven't discovered very quickly. So if you uh, heard my recording with the six cello suites by Johann Sebastian on this instrument, I recorded it. When I recorded it, I still had the neck or the belt going around my neck. That's very tiring. So later I've discovered that passing the belt around the shoulder, it's incredible because there is absolutely no weight at all on your neck.
right? So like this. So this is very, very important, okay? So remember this, this is very important. Now, here's what happens next. If you are a violinist or violist, you grab the instrument, you hang the instrument on your, uh, uh, on the belt around your shoulder. So mistake number one, holding the instrument way too high because that's what you are used to. On the violin or viola, you hold the instrument too high. If you hold the instrument like this, you cannot bow the instrument because look, what you are going to do with the bow in this position, if you want to bow parallel uh, to the bridge, perpendicular to the string, you are going to pick your nose with your bow and that's not fun, yeah? You probably don't want to do that. So which is why the instrument has to be lower, hanging low, so pointing, imagine there is a clock, yeah? Let's see, imagine that this is a watch, a clock. So the, the head of the instrument is pointing to 7, 7.30, if that makes sense, right? Not too high, never do this kind of things. So the, the instrument is pointing downwards, so when you are bowing, <laughs> Your bowing arm is going naturally perpendicular to the string, yeah, parallel to the bridge. Very natural, very easy way. The instrument has to be attached high enough so that it is locked between your chin and your shoulder here. And this is the key. Look, if you are not doing this, if the instrument is not locked, it is going to wobble when you play like hell. That means poor bow contact and that means no response. That means frustration instead of joy of making music and moving your audiences. We don't want to do that. So the instrument has to be locked. How do you lock it? Watch this. This is very important. In order to lock the instrument securely between your head and your shoulder, the belt has to be of correct length. So the belt is adjustable and you adjust it in such a way that it goes around your shoulder and sits right here. And watch this, your head is, your spine is completely straight, totally relaxed. If you need to bend your neck, that means that the belt is too long. You need to make it shorter so that the instrument comes up. And the next thing, you need to gently push the instrument away from your body, like this. Look, I'm standing just flat to the camera. You need to push the instrument gently away from your body. Why, you might be wondering, why? Well, first of all, it's great for the sound because you create this space between your body and the instrument. So there's nothing that impedes the resonance of the instrument. Yeah, that's one thing. And another thing, even more important, your, the instrument gets locked between the shoulder, that is the right shoulder, and your head. So when you are shifting upward, the instrument is not moving anywhere, if that makes sense. Because if you are not doing this, try to shift up, whoops, and the instrument just flies away, and you cannot do any shifting. So this is why it's very important. Hello Alexei, hello Helen, hello Roberto. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment below this video. By the way, if you find value in this video, please uh, feel free to share it with your friends. Um, so this is how you attach the violoncello das pala correctly. Remember, it's super easy. There is no weight. It is, of course, heavier than the viola. You are completely right. It's heavier than the viola. But because it is hanging on the belt, there is no weight to support whatsoever. So violin of uh, viola is way is heavier to play than the violoncello das pala. Number two. Your hands are not turned like in the most crazy way, um, like you do it, you have to do it with the violin or the viola. Your hands are in the most natural, relaxed position. That's how you speak, if you are Italian, of course, when you speak with hands. Well, this is an Italian instrument, so it's okay to have your hands right there. You simply turn your right arm this way, and you are ready to play. So the other thing, uh, the third thing I want to share with you, which is very important when you are starting with your Violoncello das Pala journey, hopefully soon, so that in a few days from now you are on concert stage. Um, it doesn't have to be a huge concert stage, obviously, because it's a lockdown, I heard now. So it's a little bit difficult to organize big concerts, but you can still do very small things and then invite your tiny audiences to your big performances once the lockdown is over. So the, the last thing I want to share with you in this uh, how-to video is uh, holding your right hand correctly. So here's what, let me see, where's my hand? There. So here's what uh, lots of uh, violinists 
or violists when they're just starting with Angel da Spalla are doing totally wrong. So they are kind of, yeah, they, wait a second, there. Yeah, so uh, when you are playing on Angel da Spalla, you need to hold your hand in the most naturally relaxed position this way so that you are not bending your wrist outwards so the, the wrist is in the wrist is straight with your arm relaxed and you are easy it is easy for you to open your fingers so that you have this bigger stretch it's almost like on a guitar or violin yeah uh, because the hand is in this position it is very easy for you to open your arm and reach bigger distances and most importantly you need to do this so that you stretch your first finger and set, yeah, first finger rather than the second, first finger, instead of stretching your pinky because pinky is weaker and it is more tiring for the pinky because the, the strings are very thick. Look at these strings, they are very thick. Um, so by stretching the first finger rather than the pinky, you create that very much more relaxed posture, natural posture on the shoulder spine. This also enables you uh, to relax your body and your hands in on so many occasions in every measure as you play just find all these moments to relax your uh, hands your your body your playing posture very important because the uh, cello suites uh, by Bach like the G major or D minor the number one and number two they are very easy uh, technically speaking so you will be able to master them maybe in a week you know uh, when I was recording them I recorded the two suites in one day in one go uh, but as you progress, number three is a little bit more difficult, still relatively easy, number three is still quite okay. Uh, number four, because of the key, it's uh, tricky, yeah, because of, uh, uh, of, yeah, just because of the flat keys. A uh, flat key, it's, it's tricky, so you get a little bit more strength on your fourth, on the pinky. Um, and the sixth uh, suite is, well, just amazing. It's, uh, C, yeah, C minor is also quite difficult uh, technically and this is where you definitely need to develop this capacity in your technique to relax your body all the time and the D major, the final suite, is technically the most difficult maybe yeah and the most amazing uh, musically it's absolutely a lovely piece and you're learning gradually through the first, second, third, fourth and fifth uh, cello suites it builds up your technique right uh, because you're starting from the easiest and you're progressing to the most difficult builds up your technique and as you build your technique just remember the basics easy relaxed natural posture right um, so that you don't have to master too many unnecessary movements minimalist movement yeah and relax 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 your body so this is how you get this right and add the launch of the spala dimension in your violinist or violist career. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Um, hello, amigo. Um, hello, um, Berke. Hello, Berke. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to share with you in this video. Uh, once again, my apologies for uh, yesterday's uh, um, video in which I was uh, helping one of my newest clients for whom I've built the Lanchel Daspala in the United States. Unfortunately, my main digital camera ran out of space, which is why I was not able to record this tutorial. And this is why I've decided to simply run a little Facebook Live for you, show you how to master the Lanchel Daspala really fast, what it does to your career, um, and all this incredible repertoire that is just simply waiting for you and all that success is simply waiting for you as an incredible musician in whatever country you are living all right so just let me check quickly if there are any questions so that i can answer your questions right now a lot of good advice i'll certainly follow your youtube channel thank you you're welcome bodil uh youtube channel yes you may follow my youtube channel if that fits you more but i am way more active at least at this moment on facebook and LinkedIn so but I will be also adding more videos on uh, YouTube so uh, at this moment it's not just yet hello me Michael or uh, yeah okay friends any questions if there are no any questions I will wish you a fantastic day and fantastic new week indeed so no questions good news Okay, thanks everyone who joined me in this Facebook Live and I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing with you more knowledge in my next videos.
Thanks again. Take care. Talk to you later.